To say I was mad as hell would be an understatement. I, 46 male, have a son Jake, 23 male, and fake name. Jake was a good kid growing up, so him doing this was a complete shock to me. I have a daughter too, Amber, 16 female and also fake name. When my wife passed away from virus nearly two years ago, she already had a will in place. She was immunocompromised due to a prior condition she was diagnosed with a decade before she passed, and she made sure she had a will set just in case anything happened to her. And in said will, she divided her assets between our children, and Jake got his cut as he was already 21. He used that money to put a down payment on a condo, and he also got his mother's car. But the will stated that my daughter was to get all of my wife's jewelry. That included a vintage gold ring with a diamond that had a light blue sapphire on each side of it. That ring has been passed down for generations in my wife's family. It was originally her grandmother's wedding band. Her husband was a jeweler and handcrafted the ring for her himself. And it was passed down to my wife's mother when her grandmother died, and then to my wife herself when her mother passed. And it, along with the other jewelry, was to all go to my daughter. When my wife passed away, my grief was intense. But I powered through it for the sake of my family, and they supported me 100%. So the betrayal from my son was just a rusty knife in the back to me. For the past eight months, Jake has been dating Sarah, fake name. She has my son wrapped around her finger, and she loves jewelry as she adorns herself with it a lot. My son mentioned the family jewels my wife left his sister to Sarah one day, and Sarah really wanted to see them. So Jake went into my room when no one was home and showed them to her. He later admitted to me that he'd done this, and I was angry, but I thought that would be the end of it. I was wrong. Jake came to me a week ago and begged for that ring from his mother's family jewels so that he could propose with it. He said Sarah had fallen in love with the ring when she saw it before, and he just knew it'd be the perfect ring to ask her to marry him with. He seemed completely convinced I'd be jumping for joy for him wanting to propose, but instead, I told him that I was not the one to ask as the ring belongs to Amber and I wouldn't have him pressuring her to give it up either. For a fair chance, I'd allow him to explain his reasons and ask her for it once, but only once, without pressuring her, and if she refuses for any reason, that will be the end of it. Jake agreed and asked Amber for the ring right in front of me, but she told him no because she wanted to keep it in the family jewels, and she always loved that ring. To her, it's priceless. She couldn't bear to ever give it up. I told Jake that was that and to not press the matter further. Jake left looking very unhappy about not getting the ring, but I thought he'd let it go and look into finding a similar one. But he came back another day while I was at work to talk to his sister after she got home from school. He and Amber got into a huge fight about the ring, and Amber called me crying. I called Jake and told him to get out of the house and leave his sister alone. Jake yelled at me that he should have just as much right to the ring as his sister, because my wife was his mother too. But I reminded him he got a lot of his mother's money and her car, the jewelry is Amber's, and only hers. He hung up on me and Amber soon texted me that he left very angry. Later, right before I left work, my daughter called and told me that Jake came back. He walked in dressed in a suit, went into my room and took something, then left without saying anything to Amber. She tried to keep him from leaving, but he shoved her out of the way. I rushed home as soon as my shift was over and checked my wife's jewelry box. The ring was gone. I immediately called Jake, but he didn't answer so I messaged him that I'll get police involved if he doesn't return the ring. Using it to propose won't stop me from taking it back. That finally made him talk to me, and he tried to say that I couldn't do that to him because he's my son. I said I can and will because he outright stole the ring, and he'd better bring it back right away or I would take drastic measures. Well, he phoned me right after that, and in a whisper he said that it was too late. He'd taken his girlfriend out to dinner and proposed to her with the ring. He hadn't had it for more than an hour by this point, yet the ring was already on her finger. I said that was his problem. He stole the ring. He can bring it back. It's not his, and I will do whatever it takes to make sure it's returned. And if that means going to police and blowing the whole situation up, then so be it. I'll file a report. I'll even get a lawyer. Jake started crying and saying I couldn't do this to him. I told him tough luck. He stole from both his sister and dead mother. I would not back down until the ring was returned. Jake wouldn't stop crying and making excuses, so I told him to have the ring back by morning or I would be moving forward with legal action. Jake is my son, but he still broke the law, and I couldn't overlook what he did. He said he'd be by in the morning to talk and ended the call while crying even more. Well, Jake did show up in the morning and brought his girlfriend with him to try to guilt us. Turns out, 
She not only knew he stole the ring, she wanted to keep it anyway, because she was completely in love with the ring since she first laid eyes on it. I told her I didn't care. She could have a jeweler make a copy of it or something, but the original doesn't belong to her. It belongs to my daughter and deceased wife. Jake begged me one more time not to make her give it back, but I and my daughter stood firm. Return the ring or face police and maybe even a potential lawsuit. Jake's girlfriend pulled the ring off her finger and dropped it in my daughter's hands, called me an evil jerk, then left my house in tears. Jake started screaming at me that I may have just destroyed his relationship. I retorted to him that he did this to his own relationship by stealing a ring that didn't belong to him. What kind of son steals from his own sister and dead mother? That is beyond terrible. Jake had nothing more to say to me and walked out to follow after his girlfriend. I didn't get anyone else involved in the situation, but Jake did. He tried getting support from friends and family, but he got the exact opposite reaction he'd hoped for. They were all mad at him over what he'd done. I got many phone calls and messages from people offering me condolences and saying they were not on Jake's side. I tried to do damage control, but now everybody knows. It's been a week now, and Jake's refused to speak to me. I've sent him detailed pictures of the ring, just in case he wanted a jeweler to replicate it. But making a copy would be very expensive unless he used fake stones and thus far, there has been no response. I don't know what the situation is with his girlfriend, if she even still is his girlfriend after what happened, but I still stand by the fact that Jake had to return the ring. I've since had all my wife's jewelry placed in a safety deposit box that only I have access to, and the jewelry will remain there until my daughter is 21, and may even stay there if she wants to keep it safe that way. I know I'm in the right to have reclaimed the ring. However, I don't want my son to hate me, and I don't want the family to hate him. If anyone has any advice as to how to better mediate this situation without me giving away the ring or spending a lot of money, I'm all ears. Your son was selfish. He was ready to give up a family heirloom to a girl he was seeing for eight months, who has very questionable values and is also selfish and greedy. No wonder your daughter didn't want to give him the ring to propose. If it was years later, the girlfriend would be a great addition to the family and all would be great. Maybe your daughter would have agreed to give the ring to him to propose, but he just cheapened the ring in every way. If he wants to propose and spend his life with the girl, he can go and get her a ring, but it feels like she is the kind of girl who will tell him to F off if he doesn't put an expensive ring on her finger. It's not your job to damage control. He tried to turn others against you and failed because, well, your friends and family have morals. The only thing you can do is to keep the door open for the time when maybe he will understand his mistake and is ready to admit his mistake and try to rebuild the trust he destroyed. Jeez, man, that girl of his is a little manipulative rat. Jake is a man now and he needs to take responsibility for his actions, that of which seem completely deranged. You did nothing wrong and it's up to him to make sure his family likes him. Your son is currently not a good person. I would let him stay mad till you see signs of him truly repenting. Don't coddle him. He needs to figure out himself that what he did was wrong. Stay focused on your daughter until your son comes back to make amends. You did the right thing in protecting what belonged to your daughter. Your son and his girlfriend are entitled and selfish. I wouldn't be surprised if their relationship is short-lived. It's not your job to ease consequences for your son's reprehensible actions. It's up to him to take accountability for his wrongdoing and make amends to his sister for what he attempted to do. Until he does, others will rightfully judge him harshly for his actions. Guys, please listen to the update in today's new video later on. Backstory I've been with my husband since we were 19. He's the oldest of three siblings, a brother and a sister. Brother was a hippie wannabe who didn't want to work or go to school because he didn't want to contribute to Big Brother corporations. Sister started having kids at 16, three kids with three different men. None of these men did anything for her or her kids. Husband and I put ourselves through school and have decent jobs, but for most of our relationship have been stuck deep in debt due to school loans and health issues. No kids. We're now in our late 40s and just starting to get some relief due to our being super cheap and diligent for the last decade. 12 years ago, we went no contact with his family, his choice. It was a lifetime of all of them trying to suck every penny they could out of us to support his lazy brother and his sister and her children. Father-in-law actually had a really good union job and retired with stupid sick money coming in. It didn't matter. The only time we heard from them was to ask for money. And not just, hey, can I have $20? It was, 
Hey, can you buy your sister a $300,000 house and a car? Brother-in-law racked up 3K in credit card debt and was considering filing bankruptcy. And in-laws actually had us over for dinner with him to plead his case so we would give him 3K. Again, we were super underwater with debt. And I told him, you'd be a fool to declare bankruptcy over 3K. Get two part-time jobs and pay it off. An elderly family member passed and left them a load of money. Husband ended up having severe health issues 12 years ago that put him out of work for almost a year and me out of work for three months to care for him. At that time, the phone calls asking for money never stopped. In fact, since we were off work, it was assumed all the holidays would be hosted and paid for by us. Husband went no contact with his parents. His brother went no contact with us for us being so mean. Edit. Oh, and sister-in-law was no contact with us because she owes us thousands she borrowed and didn't make any effort to pay back. I get a text a few months ago from his brother saying, Hey, is dear husband's phone number still the same? I want to contact him and have a relationship with him. He had also texted dear husband. Since he contacted me, I felt I had a right to respond back. Hey, please do contact him if you want to have a relationship with him. He'd love that. But if you or your extended family are looking for money, I want to let you know we don't have any to give. But please contact your brother if you genuinely want to have a relationship with him. In my opinion, I think they finally ran out of money from father-in-law's retirement and the inheritance and are now sniffing around. I wanted it to be up front that we're not handing out cash. If brother-in-law hadn't contacted me and just dear husband, I would not have taken it upon myself to contact him and say this. Outcome. Brother-in-law fell off the face of the earth. No further contact with dear husband. Am I the a-hole for doing this? Or should I have let this play out? Edit. Here are just a few examples of how my in-laws have treated me over the years. Whether we had money or not, we had to have holidays and provide the food. One summer cookout, I purchased a 24-pack of Italian sausages, a 24-pack of brats, and 12 fresh hamburgers. I figured we could cook this up and have lunch and dinners for the following week. Note, there were eight in-laws coming over. They proceeded to eat all of it. My father-in-law ate 12 sausages and four burgers. I was astounded. He said, well, free food. We didn't eat for a day, so we could eat as much as was here. Another cookout, mother-in-law actually asked her daughter and brother-in-law's wife to help bring in dirty dishes after dinner. I had brought out my false graph ceramic plates and bowls. Sister-in-law and brother-in-law's wife commenced to take dishes in the house and break them in pieces in my sink because they were so mad someone asked them to help. Same cookout. Sister-in-law told her oldest son to steal whatever he could find of value from our house. He stole my late father's watch my father's company had given him for a retirement gift after 43 years with the company. The reason I found out? They tried to pawn it and found out it wasn't worth that much and were mad at me that it wasn't that much. Final salvo. Sister-in-law walked into my living room with a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew and proceeded to dump it on my living room carpet in front of everyone. Immediately, everyone jumped to her defense and said, she's just jealous you own a home and she doesn't. FYI, she was 35 at the time. I don't want anything to do with these people anymore. Oh, and the final edit. Four years ago, dear husband's parents stole his identity and filed a tax return in his name, which took us two years to resolve. And on top of that, took out 200 k in credit in his name. He got LifeLock and all those accounts were closed out. Initially, he contacted them about the tax return, and his father said, I didn't do anything. Then the IRS contacted us a few months later to let us know that in-law's bank account had been compromised by hackers with that fraudulent tax return. So, dear husband called them and told them that. Father-in-law was like, what? What did you do to us? Who hacked us? We just stole your tax return. Now you are telling me hackers got my checking account info? Not the a-hole. I agree that as soon as the brother-in-law contacted you, he opened the door for you to respond. Now that you have, I would go no contact again. Not the a-hole. You've got zero reason to believe they're not up to the same tricks. And it's up to them to prove if they've turned over a new leaf. If they get angry you did such, that sounds like their problem. The fact he vanished the second you said no money kind of tells the story, doesn't it? Not the a-hole. You potentially saved your husband a lot of stress and guilt by doing that.